The title of my lesson or my sermon this morning called, is called, It's Time. As you saw some of the videos, the, the word trust and faith have been coming out just about everywhere all day. Now, it's not just that we, perf- you know, we put it all together that way. It's because God orchestrates, amen? He, he comes in and he, he says, I've got a plan. And when we move out of the way, his plan is fulfilled, amen? Don't we start to, when we start to think about it, God is in control. We have to give that up. That young man that spoke, that's, that's called spoken word, and it is a very powerful message that's used in the urban areas a lot, and it became an event at Fine Arts, at National Fine Arts. Um, a couple of our students have done them. They're very, very powerful. They speak even to myself. But I want you uh, this morning to bear with me as I read a few scriptures, and then I'll get into the, 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 the middle of my message. But um, I was reading, and as I was preparing this sermon, I just kept thinking, you know, I want to co- kind of follow up Pastor Jeff's sermon on the baptism of the Holy Spirit that we spoke about last week. And this week, it's time. And in Ecclesiastes 3, many of you have read this more times than not where the wise King Solomon of Israel wrote these words, and he says, To everyone there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance." A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time of silent, uh, uh, a time of uh, to keep, a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Let's bow our heads as we open up this morning. Father God, we're just so grateful, Lord, to be in this place, gathering, God, this is your church you have placed here, God. Father, we are your church, the people, God, and we just this morning would like to receive, Lord, whatever it is that you're trying to speak into our hearts, God. Don't let any ear leave this place and not hear what the Spirit is saying to them, God. Let it be a word from you and you alone, God. I ask for an anointing upon this preaching of your word and of God. We just ask you to meet every need that you can uh, possibly imaginable, God, today. Lord, even the ones that are failing, God. Lord, I pray right now that restoration is right around the corner, God. And we just put our faith in you as we go out throughout the remainder of our day. In your precious name we pray. And everyone said, amen. Another scripture that I wanted to pull from, talking about, you know, Jesus. But first, I want to tell you, uh, and, and I don't need to read this to you, so I'll skip it. But um, Mark 9, 14 through 29. And it's Jesus, and, and I'll explain it in just a few moments after I read the scripture. But it's Mark 9, 14 through 29. It should be on the PowerPoint. If not, you can follow along in your scripture It says that when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. Immediately when he saw them, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeting him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, I brought you my son, whom has a mute spirit. And whatever it seizes him, it throws him down and he foams at the mouth, gnashing his teeth and becoming rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, How long has this happened to him? And he said, from childhood, how often has he thrown, and often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes, immediately the father of this child cried out and he said with tears, Lord, I believe, help me Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people were, had came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. 
Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and he came out, and he became as, a, as of dead. So the, many said, he's dead, but Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, this, kind, this can only come out of, by nothing but prayer and fasting. In Matthew 17, also in the book of Mark 9, Jesus, James, Peter, and John had went up on the mountain. Of course, we know the story where they had experienced and literally been in the presence of the Lord. They had met Moses and Elijah there. They were speaking with Jesus. And Jesus, his face changed. His appearance changed. It's called the transfiguration. They had heard God speak in an audible voice. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. When they had come off that mountain, later on, they came up on this crowd. That's where the, how the picture kind of, they had already came out of that. They had church, amen. They, they were in the presence of the Lord. Some of his disciples and some of the scribes and spiritual leaders were all gathering with the people. And one man came, of course, and he tells about his son who had been suffer, suffering from like epilepsy or, or something of that effect. He falls into the fire and water. And if you hear, heard what scripture said, it says that, that this spirit tried to kill him, basically. He falls into the fall. He tried to take his life, and it began since he was young. However, he said, I did bring him to your disciples, you know, but they couldn't heal him. They couldn't do it. The man was simply looking for help. Amen. Don't we come to Christ when we need help? So he probably sought out, you know, Christ. He sought out his disciples. That's what he did. Or possibly some of the scribes, the leaders there. So Jesus, here he is walking into the scene after he had just left the mountain, you know, re just before that. He uses his personal remarks here to point out some, some things to the spiritual leaders of the day. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty blunt observation. He said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? I don't know about you, but that would hurt my feelings a little bit. He stepped on my toes. Matthew reads, it's a, you're a perverse generation. In the book of Mark, it calls us a faithless generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Jesus then says, bring him here to me. Jesus had showed his, you know, in Scripture where you read, he showed his power over the, over the, uh, the you know, the, the sun, I mean, excuse me, over the water, over the storm, all right, over the, the things of this earth. Now he was going to show his authority over the demonic spirits. In James 2.19, he says, you believe that there is a God, you do well. Even the dem demons believe and tremble. Even they are fearful when G Jesus shows up. Amen? Even they're afraid. Jesus addresses the Father later on. He says, he said to him, if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes, immediately, immediately it says, the father of the child cried out and said with, with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And what does Jesus do? He rebuked the demon, and in that very hour, it came out. After this, in private, the disciples said, why couldn't we cast it out? What would, you know, Jesus, what's going on? And what does he say to them? He says, this kind can only come out by nothing more but prayer and fasting. He was pointing out that it took an effort on their part. They had to spend time, it's time, with the Lord. They had to spend time in his presence they had to work for it. Amen. Come on, church. We, you know, he had to put in the time for it. So many times, I, and I said this to our, our, our kids this morning in our youth uh, Sunday school, had no idea. So I picked up my Sunday school book, and it was pay, speaking on faithfulness. I had no clue that that's what my scripture was about this morning until I picked up my book a couple days ago. But I was saying, you know, we live in a fast food generation where we want everything now. We want God to do it now. We just show up and God says, okay, it's done. What does Jesus say? He said, prayer and fasting. Spend time in prayer and fasting. Spend time with me. In Matthew 17, Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith of a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this does not go out except by prayer and fasting. That's what he says. So as a man of God, when I think 
uh, uh, you know, about the many miracles that Jesus performed, if you follow Scripture, Jesus a lot of times would do it when there were spiritual leaders of that day around. He would do it pretty much wherever he wanted. Amen? He did it in the synagogues. I was given an example when he healed the, the man with the withered hand in the synagogue on the Sabbath. What did they tell him? You can't do that. It's the Sabbath day. We don't do it that way. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm Jesus. I'll heal when it's time. Amen? When it's my time, I'll do it. Because he did what they said he shouldn't or could not do. Jesus would get to the real issue of the man needing his withered hand. See, some people had the belief back in those days in, in several that if you had something wrong with you, that it was because you were sinning or you had something going on in your life. A lot of times the Old Testament, you would read about that. But God, would, Jesus would use that as a moment to heal on those who believed. Amen? Jesus would find that real issue. And he would restore. You see, today, I don't want you to get the feeling because you're not seeing the mountain moved that it's because of your lack of faith or because you don't have any faith. Your faith just might be shaken. Amen? Have your faith ever been shaken before? Sometimes you get in that ditch. You get in that, as Crystal was talking earlier, thank you for the, uh, for the help there, Crystal, for giving me an illustration. But sometimes we get in places where we feel like we cannot get out. Right? We're human. Let's just call it what it is. We are human. We're going to fail. Okay? Amen? We're going to fail. I want to talk to you with some practical things to look at when you want to grow in your faith. You want to grow in your faith. Are you in a place where your faith needs to grow? Are you in that place right now? Today, I want to, I want to talk about faith. As pastor preached last Sunday about the power that comes through the Holy Spirit, and by the way, if you were not here and you would love to see that. It was a great sermon. I would encourage you to go to our web, website at hfachurch.org and go to the media section and watch that service. It was, ba it was very biblically based. It was a great teaching. Many, many people have given feedback on that teaching. I encourage you. I encourage you. The power that we receive through the gift of the Holy Spirit, amen, or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Of course, the baptizer is Jesus. We're seeking him, uh, not just the baptism, all right? Uh, seeking him and him alone and will require for us to surrender ourselves to his truth about the purpose of us to empower us to be witnesses. Who wants to be a witness? Can I get a witness? You remember that saying, can I get a witness? The fruits that come from walking in the spirit, you can read in Galatians 5.22, it says the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Did you hear that? Against such there is no law. Then the gifts that come from the Spirit, the same Spirit, I won't read all the way through it, but it's in 1 Corinthians 12. It says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. You hear that? Profit of all. For to, to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through that same Spirit, no, uh, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues, but one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Amen? The account of Jesus with the fig tree. Anybody ever read that story? And you go, what, what does that really represent? Uh, I did a little research on it because Jesus was speaking about the, the life of the religious leaders of the church, per se, of that day. How they, were, they had the form of church and they looked like the church. But what was going on there? If you read the account there in Mark, uh, and if you've never heard it, I'll read it to you. It says uh, in Mark 11, 12 through 14, and also 20 through 24, it says, Now the day when they had come out of Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing afar a fig tree having leaves. Now what's one of the things when you see a, a tree with leaves and it's supposed to bear fruit, what are you, what are you thinking? I'm going to go pull an apple off or I'm going to go pull something off and eat it. He went to see it, perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For it was not the season for the figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard him say it. Later on in that same scripture, right after that, of course, Jesus went to the temple and he ran people out of the temple for doing what? They were buying and selling. He cleansed the temple. They were buying and selling for their own gain in the temple. Jesus flipped over the tables and ran them out of the temple. Remember that story? Well, this happened after he came back from that. He finishes up and he says, Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Okay, just later on. 
And Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God, for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes to those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you will receive them and you will have them. You see, the church of that day was bearing no fruit. And that's one thing that when I, when I think about the church of today, are we bearing fruit? Are we as individuals bearing fruit? Is that where we are? Do we have enough faith to believe and trust that, that God you know, uh, is going to get us through? If we want to experience a revival in the church in our individual lives, if we're going to do that, we have to believe, we have to have lots of faith. We have to put faith in God, amen? Faith is having complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Faith in is having complete trust. Complete trust. I didn't say just believing. I said complete trust. In regard to Jesus Christ, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. That's what Hebrews 12.2 says. My first point is it's time to consider faith over fiction. Faith is in the word, not in the world. Let me say it again. Faith is in the word, not in the world. The world says you need prestige and power to make things happen. That's what the world says. Amen. Jesus said, just open, be open and have faith in me. That's all you have to do is just be open and have faith in me. The world calls Christians silly and radical. The Bible calls you blessed. Amen? The media would, world teaches us that everything is awful. The Holy Word gives us hope. See, as Pastor Jeff said last weekend, why are we so concerned in the third quarter when we know at the end of the game, at the end of the book, we win. We have a place secured for us called eternal heaven. Amen? I wrote down these lyrics of this song, and many of you here, it will show your age just telling you that. It's a song called, it says, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on or trust in Jesus' name. Now, there is a newer song like that that I think that Chris Tomlin had done, but that is an old hymn from the church that I remember as a kid we had one piano in the church, and that was our worship team, amen? And this woman would play that thing like never before. And, and we would sing that song, and I always liked those words. But my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness, amen? Not on my own. The world cannot offer you that. There's nothing it can offer you that can give you that except for Jesus alone. Galatians 3, 13 through 14, explains faith in the Spirit, and it's not of the law. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we may receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. See, we are set free from the curse of the law because of our faith. When we have faith in Christ Jesus, amen, what Paul is saying here to the Galatians is, did Abraham believe in the law? Did he believe in the law or did he believe in the God of heaven? Who did he put his trust and faith in? Amen? Did he put it in the law that was written? Did he put it? No, he believed in who had spoke to him. When he walked up on that mountain to take his son to sacrifice his one and only son because God said, to show your faith to me, Abraham, I want you to take your son Isaac and I want you to sacrifice him for me. Everybody knows that story. If you're here and you've never heard it, I would encourage you to go to Genesis 22 and read it. He was going to sacrifice his own son. Now, I don't know about you, but that would be, I would be, Lord, are you, sh I would be like, are you sure? You know, that's, that's just me thinking, right? How many times do we get in that place? We go, Lord, are you sure I'm supposed to go there? Are you sure, God, that's the way it's supposed to play out? Amen? The word of God reveals truth that builds hope. It builds hope. It is time. It is time we find faith in the truth. We have to find it in the truth. And what's the truth? Hebrews 3, 11, 1 through 3 says, Now faith is the substance, substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by the elder, elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. The Bible reveals truth. The scriptures reveal the truth. Biblical faith 
is not what we see with our physical eyes, but what we see with our spiritual sense. Amen? It's what we have in our spiritual sense. When we are walking in the Spirit, you will have a sense of what is right because the Lord will speak to you through the Holy Spirit. Do we really believe what God's Word says? Do we? I have a question. How many of you saw God create the world and everything in it? How many of you saw that? You didn't see the rerun of it? It was like on last week on like TV, right? How many of you saw that? None of us saw it, right? How do we know that it really happened that way, right? We have people that try to discount it. And, but see, the Word of God says this is exactly how it happened. And as Christians, we're like, we totally believe it. God created the heavens and the earth. Right? The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. We know that scripture, right? He also created man in his own image, right? And he took the rib of a man and he created a woman, calling her Eve. Amen? Do we believe that? Do we? So if we believe that part of the Bible, when did we stop believing the rest of it? You know, when did we stop standing on the word of God? Amen? We have to trust in the word of God. See, here's what it says. Do we have faith? Um, the Bible says so. You see, our faith isn't anything we have ever seen. Well, not all of it. We have seen some things happen, right? Some of us have miracles that have happened in our lives. We've had faith and trust in God. I can look over this uh, congregation and I can point out people that I know God has healed. You know why? Because they've either told me or Pastor Jeff said, that person had cancer. We prayed for him and a couple days later they went to the doctor and they were healed. Or we prayed for that person years ago. Or that person would tell stories. Uh, Mita McNett was telling me a story one time. She said she was in a really bad car accident and she said, I know God spared me. She said it was a terrible wreck. She said it happened right in this intersection right out in front of the church. She said, I know that God was faithful in sparing my life. Do we have faith? In Hebrews 11.8, it said, by, Abra by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go to a place which would receive, he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. See, Abraham, man, he stepped out in faith. He left the luxuries of his home where it was nice and plurishable. And, and you know, he had all the goods he ever wanted. Everything was nice. And God said, I don't want you to stay here. I want you to pick up and go. Now, how many of you, if God told you today, go home Pack all of your stuff, and I want you to go over on, to this city, and I want you to move away from here. How many of you can honestly say, okay, that's pretty easy to do, right? That wouldn't be the easiest thing to do, but by faith he did that. You know, I kind of, I, I don't want to use myself as an illustration, but I kind of know a little bit about what Abraham, how Abraham was feeling. And, and this is not a sermon about me. Let me just make that very clear. It's just an illustration, Okay. I don't want you to look at me. Look at Jesus. He's, he's the one that, that will meet your needs. But, you know, when I was working full-time in a job, I kept really laboring over, you know, whether to go into full-time ministry. And, and my mom, God bless her, she said, to, she said son, you just got to step out in faith. Every time I pray for you, God just says, son, you know, you just have to step out in faith. That's all you can stand on is, is trust in the Lord, faith in him. He will see you through. It's also time to put our faith into action. Now, here comes the, the part where I fail sometimes, amen? As children of God, we're always saying what we believe. I believe it, right? Or we have faith in different situations. Doesn't the Bible say so? We have faith, Philippians 4.19, and my God shall do what? Supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, Amen. Here Paul is writing a letter, letter to Philippi telling them of how he knew what it was like to be poor. He knew what it was like to be rich. He knew what it was like to be hungry. He knew what it was like to be, you know, to have plenty. And they are the ones who came alongside him and, and, and helped him through that. They, they supplied a lot of his needs. They sent things to him for him to be able to get, you know, be a missionary, so to speak. He was a church planner. He took the gospel to the Gentiles, Amen. He took it all over the, the, the middle part of the world, even to Rome. What does the Bible say in James 2? Here's what it says. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which they are, are needing for the body, what does it profit? Thus... Also, faith by itself, it, it, it does not work, have works, it is dead. If it does not have works, it is dead. Saying we believe means nothing if our actions don't support it. Yeah. 
Isn't it true? I can say all day long, Pastor Jeff, I trust that you will take care of, of you know, my car. I know you will, but you know what? Do I really believe that? Am I going to give them the keys and say, here, Pastor, you go ahead and drive my car as much as you? I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? Or, or I can say, I trust you, but do I really? I mean, I can say, God, I have faith that you're going to do this, but do I really put any action to it? Amen? We have to put action to it. It's time to have faith. In all things. In all things. Now, here, here's, a, here's a good one. We say we have faith in all things, but do we? For is, faith, faith is not simply head knowledge. It's not just saying, I got it here. I've got faith in all things. You know the story in Mark, the woman or the widow with two mites? What does it say there? It says that she gave two mites, and that's all she had in her possession. All these other people came through, and they had plenty, and they gave a portion See, they gave a portion of what they had. And Jesus was watching, and the disciples said, he asked the disciples, because I think he was, he, Jesus always had teaching moments going on, amen? He was always teaching. He was like, now, how do you think, that, who gave the most? And they're like, well, it had to be this guy over here. He gave a bunch, and this person gave a bunch. He said, no, that's not right. He said, that little old, old widow lady gave all that she had. She gave everything that she possessed. That's giving more. That's giving all Malachi 3.10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open up for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing, that there will be no room enough to receive it. See, we have to start thinking about that not just in our monetary. We have to start thinking about that in everything in our life. Do we really put enough belief and faith in God that he's going to meet the need no matter what it is? Crystal just gave perfect examples of how God meets our needs. Sometimes Pastor Jeff was telling me when he was a kid that they would come home and they would find groceries on their door and had no idea how it got there. But they had, his dad had prayed that they, they needed food. And somebody would just happen to come by and drop them off food. How many of you know we're part of that we are part of that system, amen? We as the church are part of that system. We may be the one taking the groceries over there, amen? We may be the one reaching out to that person. We may be the person on the receiving end of that. How many, how many of you know that sometimes God meets our needs at the last minute and we're like, oh, I cannot believe, you know, but, but we have to put trust in him. If your finances are messed up and you don't, you know, you don't give really regularly or maybe you're not a good steward of what you have, Stop doing it your way. Stop trying to do it your way. It's not working out. Do it God's way. Let God take care of it. Amen? That shows faith in him when you put everything in him. It's time to have real faith. It's time to have real faith. It's time. It's time, church. It's time. It's time to have real, real faith through trust. Does our faith end at our thoughts? Or do we trust in God to handle all things? Do we go, okay, I trust you, God. And then that's it? Is that where it stops? There is a big difference, big difference. And I heard this at our seminar and I loved it. Pastor Jeff and I both did. The gentleman said there's a big difference between faith and trust. We need to have faith with trust. And you're like, okay, and I'll give you an illustration. Philip Petit, a Frenchman, Showcased in the movie The Walk, if you've ever seen it, walks over high wires. He's stretched between buildings, canyons, skyscrapers. This is a real person. He really does this. Anything that you could possibly put a wire connected to two ends. And then he walks over from one side to the other. One of his greatest accomplishments took place in 1974. He walked a tightrope between the former Twin Towers in New York City, 1,350 feet above the ground. Uh, if you do the math, it's 4.5 football fields high. Not only, and, and trust me, if he would have fallen, there was nothing there except the street. We know what the end result would have been. Not only here, but he also had climbs on the Eiffel Tower, the Grand Canyon, Niagara Falls. Many times the world would watch as Felipe walked these cables. In Paris, over 500,000 people came out to see him walk the Eiffel Tower to commemorate the 200th year anniversary of the French Revolution. The cheers he heard, the roar of the crowd was deafening. Go, Felipe, go. They all had faith he would accomplish yet another walk. One time in the midst of his walk, or getting ready to prepare for a walk, he decides, he said, today I'm going to use a wheelbarrow. 
I'm going to push this wheelbarrow across this tight, this wire all the way up in the air. And as he was getting ready, all the people were chanting his name. Felipe, Felipe, we have faith you can do it. You can make it. We know you can. Now they had faith that he would make it. But when he finally got almost ready to go, he, he looked over at an, at an innocent bystander. And he says, now you climb in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> now that just went from faith to trust real quick. Amen. How many would want to get in that wheelbarrow? 1,350 feet above the ground. Amen. Faith is having complete trust and confidence in someone or something. As our praise team comes this morning, trust is believing in the reliability, the truth, and the ability or strength of. Here's what Hebrews 11.6 said. Now, I read some of Hebrews 11, and here's the complete, another section, segment of it. It says, but without faith... It is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe he is and that he is a rewarder to those who do what? Diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. Our faith will only be as good as our level of trust we place in God. Now this morning, I, I just it blows me away. It's just God again. When Pastor Jeff got up and gave the interpretation of that and the message that came for the edification of the church, what's one of the words that he used? Trust. He used the word trust. When I chose the song, I will trust in you, and I was talking to Crystal about that song. I, I don't even know why I thought of that song. I was just driving along, and it says, you know, I didn't even have my sermon completed then. And, and, it, and it was amazing how God just placed that upon my heart. But here are the things we need to consider. It's time to consider faith over fiction. It is time that we find faith in the truth of God's Word. It's time to put faith into action. Get moving, church. It's time to have faith in all things. We have to give it to the Lord. It's time we have faith in Him. It's time to have real faith through trust. Amen? It's time to have faith that trusts God. As you're here this morning, I want to bow our heads in the privacy of this moment. Now, God was speaking earlier, and the Holy Spirit was really ministering and moving. Some of you walked in here today, and your faith has been rocked. You may have something going on in your life, and you would say, Pastor, I don't know where to turn. I've got things that have that came, crept up in my life and I just need to surrender them to the Lord today. See, all of us have been there before. We've all walked in, hey, I, I have that issue. I'm right there with you. It's not out of condemnation. That's out of love and concern. The Lord didn't give us that message this morning to trust Him in, in Him just so it would sound good. He's saying, lean not on your own understanding. In all things, all things acknowledge Him. In all things acknowledge Christ. This morning, if you're here and you would say, you know what, I, I'm, God is really speaking to my heart this morning. I need to put my total dependency and trust in Him. I think it'd be fitting that we as the church rally around these folks. Now, I don't want you to be embarrassed. I want you to be, know that we love you and God loves you. If you're here and you would say, Pastor, I need to hear from the Lord. It's me. I need prayer. I've got something going on. I need healing in my life. My finances, something in my finances are messed up. I've got a broken situation in my marriage. I've got, you know, uh, uh, friends and relatives that we don't even speak. We need to surrender it to the Lord today. The only way it's going to, to be taken care of is if we need to bring it to the Lord. Amen? If that's you this morning, would you honor me by getting up out of your seat and coming up here and kneeling down at this altar? And as these people come, I, I want to encourage you. I, want, I, know, I know there's people here that have things going on in your life. You need to spend some time at the altar. And there's many, many people here this morning that would pray with you. We have prayer people, uh, altar folks that would come and pray with you. 
Also, Pastor Jeff is here, myself. We would love to pray with you. As people are even coming right now, church, I want you to rally around behind these folks. There's more of you that have things going on, but, but pride is holding you back. Something's holding you back. What will they think? What will someone think if I'm that person that, 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 that needs help? God, I need your help this morning. There's more of you. There's more of you here that need, need God in his, in his infancy, in his strength and his power. There's more of you here. Leaders, prayer warriors, rally around these folks. Rally around these folks. They need to hear from the Lord this morning. See, bondages are broken when you bring it to the Lord. Amen? Some of you have bondages in your lives that are holding you back. I encourage you. I encourage you. Get up out of your seat and make your way down to this altar. Give it to the Lord right here on the altar. Shed it to Him. Give it to Him because He will supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory. Even when you're like, God, I feel hopeless. God has hope. I see others. There's others that that need to come. There's more of you that need to come. God wants to meet you right here. Lord, we thank you, God. Thank you, Lord God, for these folks. We thank you, God, for these folks. Lord, continue to minister, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. If we could, we could get some folks to come up and pray with my friends that are coming up here. Thank you. Thank you. God is here to meet you right where you are. There's needs, folks. This is a great opportunity for you to give it to God. This is a great opportunity for you to just lay it on the altar. Give it to God. I, I, I encourage you this morning. God is here to meet you right where you are. Maybe you're here this morning as they're praying. You would say, you know, Pastor, I walked in here and, and, and I don't even, I don't even have a relationship with Jesus. I, I don't even know what it's like to ask him into my heart. And this morning, I would like to give my Lord heart to the Lord. If you're here this morning and you'd say, I've never done that ever in my life. I've never given my heart to Jesus. But this morning, I want to give it to Him. If that's you this morning, I just encourage you to get out of your seat, come up and kneel down at this altar right now, and just give your heart to to Jesus. He wants to meet you right where you are. He said, come all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He'll give you peace. He's the eternal God. He created all things. He sees everything in your life. He sees everything from beginning to end. There's nothing impossible for God. I just encourage you. If that's you this morning, 